The SL65 Black Series has always been one of my all-time favorite Mercedes. I mean, with its savage looks, massive engine, and rear-wheel drive layout, what's really not to like about it? And thanks to Wheels Boutique in Miami, Florida, today, I'm actually gonna drive one. There's no denying the Black Series is one of the craziest looking cars ever created. Just look how wide it is. I mean, the fender flares are ridiculous. And despite how it looks on the surface, this is not just a tuned and body kitted SL65. In fact, the only body panels that are the same between the SL65 and the SL65 Black Series are the doors and the mirrors. The rest of the body has been constructed of carbon fiber reinforced plastic for weight savings and extra savagery. In fact, if you actually look really closely on the hood, you can see the pattern of the carbon fiber reinforced plastic in plain sight. Every angle of the Black Series is mesmerizing. Take a look at the fender vents, for instance. Not only do they release hot air from the brakes as well as the engine, but they also create one of the most savage profiles ever to be fitted on a car. The fender flares themselves look really cool, but they're functional as well. In fact, they allow the track of the SL65 to be widened by 4.5 inches in the front and 4.1 inches in the rear. In the front, we've got massive air ducts that helps cool the behemoth motor that lies behind this aggressive front bumper. Air gets fed into the engine's radiator as well as two intercoolers, the power steering radiator, and it helps cool the brakes as well. Up on the hood, we have functional heat extractors that allow air to escape upwards, and they also look epic. Under the massive carbon fiber reinforced plastic hood of the SL65 Black Series lies a similar motor to the normal SL65, a six liter twin turbocharged V12. Except in the Black Series, we've got 12% larger turbos, a revised intake, revised ECU, as well as exhaust system. And this bumps power up to a ridiculous 661 horsepower and 738 pound feet of torque. Yes, that's right, 738 pound feet of torque. What's even crazier than that is the SL65 Black Series actually makes more torque than that, to the tune of 885 pound feet of torque. But in order to save you from dying and save the car from killing itself, Mercedes has electronically limited it to 738. Ugh, only 738, what are we gonna do? Hop on around to the back of the SL65 Black Series and it doesn't get any less intimidating. In fact, it probably gets more so. We've got a massive carbon fiber rear diffuser, which of course adds downforce to the track focus beast. It also adds additional cooling to the car's limited slip differential. Now we also have a carbon fiber rear wing. This actually rises up automatically at 75 miles an hour, 4.7 inches up from the deck lid. When it's down, it fits flush with the bodywork. The SL65 Black Series is as rare as it is spectacular. In fact, they only made 350 of these from 2009 to 2011. Half of them, 175, came to the United States. So spotting one on the road is pretty unlikely. In fact, I've actually only seen one SL65 Black Series driving in my entire life. And when that happened, I flipped my car around, stopped what I was doing, chased after it to take a picture. When it came out, the MSRP was $300,000. Finding one for sale now is pretty difficult, although I did a little search online, and there are three for sale currently in the United States. And while normal Mercedes AMG products depreciate like a meteorite headed towards Earth, the SL65 has maintained most of its value. SL65 Black Series with five to 10,000 miles on them are going for anywhere between 225 and $300,000. Sadly, the US spec SL65 Black Series interiors are quite a bit different than those that landed in Europe. What do I mean by that? Well, for one, the seats I'm sitting in are the exact same seats in the normal SL65 for the US spec versions. In Europe, we got these awesome carbon fiber bucket seats. Additionally, the European versions have carbon fiber door inserts, not these heavy leather ones. US required that we have side curtain airbags, so there goes that as far as the carbon fiber is concerned. The bummer is those two options alone save 340 pounds. So the US version is nowhere near as light as it could be. In fact, the US spec SL65 Black Series almost seems confused at what it's supposed to be. The interior is so luxurious that I have massaging seats on a car that's meant for the track. It seems like it's adding unnecessary weight. Check this out, there's even a compartment at the front of the seat. Open this up to reveal a place where you can store all of your, all of your wallet. 
There's also a ton of storage in the door itself. You click this button and it automatically actuates upwards. There's a massive storage compartment here in the center. It even has two cup holders that open in a spectacular fashion when you press them. Whoa! <laughs> That's ridiculous. The SL65 Black Series even has an enormous trunk for when you need to... I actually don't know when you would ever need a large trunk on an SL65 Black Series, but in case you want to bring 20 helmets to the track, there you go. Last thing before we take the Black Series for a drive. A major difference between the SL65 and the Black Series variant is the roof. On the normal SL65, it is a hardtop convertible but that adds a lot of weight. The normal metal roof and those motors doesn't make any sense on a car that's prepped for the track. So they've ditched that entirely, gotten rid of the electric motors and replaced it with a carbon fiber reinforced plastic roof. They've also changed the angle of the roof for better aerodynamics. Not only does it save weight, it also looks a heck of a lot better. Overall, the US spec versions are 210 pounds lighter than the normal SL65. If we had the interior options, it'd be a lot less than that but the curb weight is still 4,200 pounds, which isn't exactly light for something that's supposed to be prepped for the track. It kind of reminds me of the Bentley GT3R. You're taking an already morbidly obese vehicle, cutting some weight out of it, and it's pretty hard to end up with a competitive curb weight. I have to say, it's pretty weird driving a car that looks like a road legal version of a DTM race car on the outside, and then on the inside, we have leather everywhere, and massaging seats. It's almost like the SL65 Black Series for the US spec version couldn't decide whether it wanted to be an ultimate luxury car or a flat out track car. And it decided it wanted to be both at the same time, which is an interesting tactic. Let's see how it works. One of the biggest sore spots of the SL65 Black Series as well as the SLR is its transmission. There's only one transmission available and that is the AMG SpeedShift Plus five-speed automatic. They couldn't do the seven-speed multi-clutch transmission in the normal SL65 because of the torque figure. 738 pound-feet of torque is a lot to deal with. Although imagine this thing with a sequential manual or an actual manual transmission. That'd be a riot. We've got four different modes for the transmission. Comfort mode, obviously, less throttle response. It's easy to drive around. I'm honestly shocked driving this SL65 Black Series is as easy as any other car. I mean, it actually feels like an SL550 just cruising around. Put it into sport mode and the throttle response gets a little bit quicker. And to the right of that, we've got manual one and manual two. When you click M1, of course, you have to actually manually shift the transmission with the paddles mounted behind the steering wheel at nine and three yourself. Manual two is simply just a better version of manual one where the shifts happen 25% quicker than in manual one. Whoa, wow, whoo, whoa, yep, this car is stupid fast. You can imagine with the rear wheel drive layout, 738 horsepower and traction control off, this thing would lay down some pretty epic burnout. Speaking of traction control, we've got three different levels. We've got normal, everything's on. We've got ESC sport, if you wanna make it a little bit more exciting. And then we have ESC off when you wanna die because the SL65 is not a forgiving car. I love some of the unique details of the SL65's interior. Check out the seats, for instance. These lovely square patterns that look almost like they're positioned exactly where the massage functionality is going to be. The headrests themselves have the AMG logo embossed in them, and I love the double white stitching throughout the interior. Now, what's really cool is on the shift lever, right on the top here, you actually have a little insignia that says USA, one of 175, so you can remember just how rare this thing truly is. Now, despite weighing 4,200 pounds, oh, the SLC, <laughs> I'm like trying to continue my sentence and I just can't, this thing's a riot. The SL65 Black Series actually is really quick. Zero to 60 happens in 3.5 seconds and the quarter mile in 11.6 at 124 miles an hour. For reference, the SLS, the newer, lighter aluminum AMG, did the quarter mile in 11.7 seconds, which is a tenth slower. Steering is tighter than most Mercedes and the suspension rides very hard. That is because the suspension out of the factory, the coilovers are tuned for the Nürburgring. A height adjustable of up to 0.8 inches. It's tuned for the Nürburgring. How much of a race car is that? The SL65 Black Series gets a lot of flack for its brakes. They're slotted and ventilated discs 
with six piston calipers in the front and four pistons in the rear. Well, the stopping distance is absolutely crazy, 60 to zero in 105 feet for a 4,200 pound vehicle. The actual brake feel isn't all that good. It takes significant depression of the pedal to actually slow the car down, and it does feel a bit soft, although not quite as bad as everyone was making it out to be. Honestly, it's livable. So what's the SL65 Black Series like to drive around town? I'm stuck in traffic, I'm going slow. Honestly, really, really comfortable. I'm almost shocked. The SL65 Black Series is nowhere near as hardcore as I was expecting. Sure, the suspension is pretty stiff and it looks wild and it's got a ton of power, but it's so refined compared to what you're used to for a tracked prepped car nowadays. When you drive a Performante, everything is rough and violent and you hear rocks bouncing up against the underbody. The noises are so intense and the SL65, it seems pretty tame. My biggest disappointment, however, is the noise. When you floor it, you really don't hear all that much at all. The turbo blow-off valves do sound fantastic, but the V12 just feels muted and nowhere near as aggressive and lively as you'd want from a track-focused car like this. Now, from the outside, it does sound pretty good. AMG cars are known for their burble, their grumble, that mean, aggressive noise, but I think it's gotta be at least twice as loud for this car to be a lot more fun. All right, maybe under a tunnel, maybe it'll sound good here. Let's see. <laughs> the blow off valve is nice, but you really don't get too much sound out of this thing. Well, in a rare car such as this, there's only one thing Vehicle Virgins needs to do, and that is a five things I hate about the SL65 Black Series. First up, absolutely, is the sound. It's just nowhere near loud enough. You've got no sound penetration into the cabin whatsoever. When you floor it, you surge forwards quickly, but you don't get to experience any of that epic six liter V12 madness that surely could be fixed with a louder exhaust and some reduced insulation in the interior. Second up is the US spec seats. It makes no sense to have leather massaging seats in a black series, plain and simple. The fact that they're fully electronically adjustable, they've also got massaging functionality, lumbar support, they're super comfortable. It's just way too much weight. Third up is the transmission. The AMG SpeedShift Plus five-speed automatic transmission is as much of a mouthful to say as it sucked. The paddle response is super slow, whether you're upshifting or downshifting, and it just takes away from the fun. Also, I'm not sure what's going on with the look of the transmission. I'm sure these horsehair toothbrush bristles are to keep dirt out from the gear selector, but they look terrible. Fourth up is the build quality. This car only has 5,000 miles on it, and it's already squeaking and rattling. The entire car feels like it wants to fall apart. On a $300,000 machine, you don't really want rattles and squeaks. Lastly is the traction control management. When you've got traction control on and you floor it in the SL65, because it makes so much power, the traction control system freaks out and cuts power abruptly. It's not exactly what you want when you're trying to accelerate, and it also feels a little bit dangerous. Modern day traction controls are really good at allowing the power to come on smoothly and seamlessly. In the Ferrari F12 I just reviewed, that was rear wheel drive and had more power than this car, even with traction control on, you were able to seamlessly thrust forward through first and second gears. In this, it's a bit of a jerky, whoa, 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 wait, don't do that, don't do that. You basically have to turn traction control off which is fine, but I imagine for the majority of SL65 Black Series owners, turning traction control off when you're driving on a daily basis probably isn't a good idea. Now, I'm being a little harsh on the car because it's not what I expected it to be. When you look at an SL65 Black Series from the outside, you imagine the most raw, pure driving Mercedes that exists out there. Instead, it's a luxury GT car that's quiet on the inside, that's got lovely, luxurious seats, all these storage spaces and dual zone climate control and cup holders. It's just not the brute force car that I had imagined. Now this only applies to half of the SL65 Black Series. The European versions with their carbon fiber seats, carbon fiber door inserts, make a heck of a lot more sense. In that regard, all you really have to do to make that a perfect car is add an exhaust because it's just way too quiet. Uh, another problem, the turning radius is absolutely horrible. All right, let's floor it here. Wow. <laughs> I will give it that, it accelerates so dang fast, especially once you get into second and third gear and you can fully unleash all that power. 
Whew. Let's take a look at this car from a different perspective. Let's remember that this is an SL65, which is the ultimate luxury convertible two-door Mercedes. From a GT car standpoint, the SL65 Black Series is epic. It looks incredible. This is my favorite looking Mercedes ever created. It's stupid fast, it's easily modifiable with that twin turbo setup, and it's practical. Here's something I never, ever imagined I'd say before coming into this review. The SL65 Black Series could be a daily driver. Now, you'd horribly depreciate the vehicle, but this car could honestly be driven every single day. It's so comfortable, so easy to drive, and the storage space is out of this world. The trunk in the back could fit several bags of golf clubs. You've got a rear parcel shelf back here where you can fit more backpacks. You've got storage spaces all over. So from that perspective, the SL65 Black Series is amazing. It's an incredible GT car that looks like a DTM race car. You could legitimately take this on a thousand mile road trip and be comfortable the entire way in a Black Series. So with that, I'm gonna pull over, put on the point of view camera and show you what it's like to drive the SL65 Black Series from a first person point of view. All right guys, well now it's time to show you exactly what it's like to drive the SL65 Black Series from a first person point of view. This is the key, looks no different than any of your typical Mercedes of this era. In fact, all the way up till 2016, the key looked exactly like this, no matter which version you got. Come around back, honestly, this has to be the best looking Mercedes ever created. Unlock the car, it makes a very interesting noise. Hop on in, it's actually, despite the wide sill, very easy to hop into the SL65. Shut the door, nice and sturdy sound. The steering wheel feels really nice in your hand, perforated leather, the paddles are at the perfect position, thank gosh they're not ugly buttons. And they actually feel quite nice to activate. You've got hands-free calling, analog tachometer goes up to 220, and the Speedo, interestingly enough, has shift light. And over here, you've got your controls for the lights, like your typical Mercedes. You have controls for the seats on the side here. We've got three different storage settings for the seat position, trunk switch there. Over here in the center console, we have the climate control unit, dual zone, all of the controls here. These are those awesome cup holders that open like transformers, although they look quite fragile, so we'll be careful there. Click on, that opens up the six and a half inch screen for the infotainment. Graphics are what you'd expect from a car of this era. Not exactly the prettiest compared to today's standards. Everything is controlled via the arrows here. Let's scroll over to video, DVD video. That sounds safe. We've got a lockable glove box here, a massive center console I was talking about, able to store my GoPros and water. Normally, you can't actually fit GoPros in any glove box because of their awkward shape. Visibility in here is fantastic. Very open, airy cabin, doesn't feel claustrophobic in the slightest. The rear window is massive, and despite the wing being 4.7 inches above the deck lid, it doesn't obstruct your view whatsoever. Go ahead and pull the lever into drive. Here are the different drive select options. Let's put it into manual mode. You can see an M pops up on the dash there. Click over to manual two. You can see the shift lights on the dash there, going one by one up the RPM range. Let's floor this thing. <laughs> As you get to red line, the shift indicator turns red. Absolutely fighting for traction with that 738 pound feet of torque. Let's go ahead and floor it again. The responsiveness of the paddles is laughable at best. I hit the paddle at 5,000 RPMs as it was climbing up to six, and even that bounced it off the rev limiter. Downshifts actually respond pretty good, but those upshifts has at least a thousand RPM delay at full throttle. Give it some more gas here. Wow. No denying the SL65 with its 661 horsepower is quite the fast car. It honestly sounds a bit like a Bugatti Veyron from the interior. All you hear is this low rumble and turbo noises, which is a similar sensation you get from the quad turbo W16 in the Veyron. But honestly, unless you put your foot down, the SL65 Black Series feels entirely like a normal car. Overall, the SL65 Black Series is an incredibly luxurious, very easy to drive, practical in terms of all its storage compartments, super fast 
Grand Touring car. It doesn't have the rawness you'd expect from a vehicle that looks like a DTM race car from the road, but if you ignore that, the SL65 Black Series is an absolute joy to drive. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. Special thanks to Wheels Boutique in Miami, Florida for making this possible. Thank you guys seriously so much for letting me drive this beast. I look forward to seeing you guys next video.